Welcome to the first episode of the Selected Podcast. I'm your host, XR Aguayo. Really excited to be part of this new project here at the Selective. The goal of the podcast is to continue building the community here at the Selective. And although our audience knows us as the fashion, e-commerce, and consignment platform, we want the Selective to be more than that. We already have some amazing editorials, pieces on the site, and the podcast is just an extension of that endeavor. Throughout this journey, you can expect interviews with creatives in and around the fashion industry and beyond. And we're going to tackle uh, some of the history of the garments we sell in the Selective and much, much more. To kick off the podcast, we wanted y'all to get to know some members of the team. First, we have T. How you doing, man? man? Yes, you know, I'm glad, like you said, I started to be a part of the podcast. And I'm glad to see how we can grow this to be more than, uh, than just the platform. And yeah, I'm really excited. Cool, man. Great to have you on. We also have Corey. Corey, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you guys? Uh, my name is Corey. Uh, on the website, my rare name is Kira. Corey or Kira, I work with both. Um, yeah, uh, I normally work on editorials for the website. I've done, so far, I've just done an interview with a, a guy named James Bogart talking about his Supreme collection and how he's done, uh, he's gone every single Supreme box logo tee together in one collection, so yeah. Great piece, by the way. And, and for all of those listening, you know, be sure to, tech, to check out uh, all, all the amazing editorials that the team puts on the Selective. There's a lot to read there. Um, but yeah, we just wanted the first episode to be a little meet and greet get some of y'all to to know some members of the team. Corey just explained that he does some of the editorial stuff. For me, I, I was brought on the team to work on the podcast. I'm excited about that. Uh, but T, uh, run it down, man. Uh, your role here at The Selective. Yeah, I mean, you know, Greg, who will come on hopefully later down the line, him and I started The Selective, and really, you know, we're just looking to grow it to be a real good community for, you know, like-minded individuals. And yeah, I mean, I oversee a lot of the things bit of everywhere you know oversee the daily operations and whatnot but uh i'll also be coming onto the podcast occasionally and you know i'm looking forward to you know like xr said interviewing some interesting people and you know talking and touching on all kinds of topics within the industry for sure um we are in different parts of the world right now which is really great because it allows us to be kind of in the same room um you know technology has enabled that and honestly the pandemic has enabled that we're going to get to the pandemic a little bit later and how that's kind of change the fashion industry if you will even individually and, and we can talk about that but first guys uh we want to talk about pickups of the month now this is something that the team is also going to be contributing to at some point uh, down the line we can have editorials on our pickups of the month it's going to be a great way for you all to see what we're personally buying and collecting um but yeah pickups for me i'll start off the biggest thing i got this month was a beautiful overland b3 bomber uh, that my dad actually passed down for me i was telling the team about this um, really into the military stuff right now, the vintage military stuff. It's just, you know, anything vintage route, and, and I don't know, I, I just like the military route, military surplus, all that good stuff. And now that I'm back in New York, it keeps me warm. But I would say that's my big pickup of this month. Corey, what have you been getting? I only got one thing, really. It was, like, these um, these trainers from the Louis Vuitton, like, virtu- like the virtual Louis Vuitton sneakers, and it's just, like, a white pair with, like, gray accents. As well as right, uh, the new pairs, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I also got a uh, quick plug for a brand, uh, local brand, small brand, support small brands. Yes. Uh, it's called Texclo, a pair of trousers. Um, <laughs> I heard they did this. take a while to get here, but I think that was just because of uh, Canadian Canada Post being terrible. Because uh, they shipped out like basically the day after I bought them, but they just took like forever to get there because of Canada Post because they were stuck in customs for like like a month or something like that. I heard yeah. they're the only trousers you'll ever need. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that, actually. <laughs> nah, but jokes aside, yeah, you know, some of you guys may know Guan and I were on a couple pair of trousers. Um, and yeah, some of the people that have been receiving them, they've really been enjoying them, so I'm psyched to see that. But uh, segue into my, I guess, pickup of the month. Um, XR and I, we met not long ago, but yeah. since I met him, I've been following him on Instagram, and I've seen a couple of his fit pics and whatnot. And um, he posted some pics in this Bare Knuckles. If you guys aren't familiar with Bare Knuckles, uh, XR, I'll let you touch on the brand a little bit, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Bare Knuckles is a, is a great band. Uh, uh, I based out of the Portland area. You have Cole and Jacob Keller. You all probably know Jacob Keller from uh, from Insta- uh, YouTube. He's like an OG YouTuber. Right, hey, OG YouTuber. Yeah, OG YouTuber. Uh, first, like the OG first Fresh Apparel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah always Fresh Apparel. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, like, a, a lot of Bare Knuckles' old collections was actually, like, super grungy, like, super vintage. Yeah. And then this collection was just, like, super Western. Uh, yeah, so... K-90 
came out of the like blue. I, so yeah, I hadn't checked out anything from them, but I mean, I saw, I haven't been keeping up with the releases, but I mean, I, I gotta give respect to, to XR. I mean, I was peeping his fits and he has a sick, um, in their most recent collection, Bare Knuckles did this Western suede jacket in like yeah. this beige light tan color, which I mean, I thought was insane. And then after I saw XR pulling off, I had to hop on their website and luckily I saw that the only size they still had was a small, which happens to be my size. So yesterday I had to pull the trigger in. So now I'm looking forward to receiving that jacket, but yeah, I'm definitely excited to get that. You were also saying it kind of resembled like a, because the branding is like super minimal or something you'd probably see from Tom Ford. Like a yeah, super exactly. Look. And like, I mean, there's no branding at all, right? Besides the bare knuckles tags on the inside. Yeah. And I mean, I remember that they did this exact jacket, if I'm not mistaken, in like a darkish green. Or yeah, blue yeah I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah, for last season. And I know for a fact Tom Ford has a suede jacket that's like in that exact same color. And that jacket already gave me like strong Tom Ford vibes. But um, this one, even like, I guess I could pull off better this light kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. sand color so i mean i'm really hyped to get that in xr shout out to you though for yeah me on. yeah and shout out to bare knuckles for releasing good stuff I, I love the western direction the western looks have kind of been taken off a little bit recently um, for sure Corey, yeah. going back to you man the, the the louis vuitton sneakers bro I've, I've been wanting obviously every, they're now iconic you know shout yeah. out virgil and the team at lv for putting together that sneaker um, for if, sure if you were to go back 10 years like lv sneakers weren't even in the conversation Right, yeah, at all. And now you see them on StockX, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The only ones that you d- even talk about were like the, the Kanye ones, right? Like the Dons, the yeah. Jasper, yeah. whatever. Speaking of which, shameless plug, we have a pair. Yeah, we have a few pairs black of Black and a pair, uh, cream pair of the, the Jaspers from Kanye's original collab with Louis Vuitton. Those are available on Selected right now if you guys want to check that out. But yeah, I mean, these, these Virgil's sneakers, I mean, they're sick, right? I mean, I had. Had, I've had a couple of pairs, the original black and gray and red mm-hmm. colorway, and then the white and um, an orange. And then most recently, I bought like the white and like pinkish kind of salmon yeah. colorway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull those off. I kind of just like <laughs> my, my LV rep kind of sent me a picture and I was kind of in the moment. I was like, yeah, these kind of look kind of fresh, but I don't know. I might, might put those up on the selective, but, but I don't know. I kind of like the colorways he's been doing. I like a lot of the stuff where he's been For doing sure. the LV. I really like that. Uh, there's like a new, um, like he took the black cement pair from the original season and he did like this he added new, like some um, blue like yeah i really like that pair yeah 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 i mean speaking of which i mean unfortunately you guys can't see us but Corey right now is wearing you know virgil yeah. lv the the studio crew neck that we we have sold one of these through the selective as well mm-hmm. but um on the topic of us not being in the same room i mean shout out to you guys who are listening right now this is probably going to be you know an audio only kind of format but in the future we definitely plan on you know having the whole podcast studio and hopefully you know xr is based in new york and i'm usually based in new york city so hopefully we'll be able to get that set up soon and you know get some of these interviews in person and everything i know a lot of you guys would like to see that but for now i mean we're still excited to be here on zoom 100 percent, yeah it, it, and for sure yeah it, it's the beauty of tech definitely is the beauty of tech that we can still be kind of in the same room in, in a weird way and still be able to talk about this but um, yeah, man, those LV sneakers are crazy. I I haven't even looked at a pair. Corey, when you got those out the box, how did it feel? Honestly, <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna sound like um, kind of slanderous for saying this, but I feel like the quality is a little bit overhyped. Like, mm. they're yeah, definitely d- like way better than like a I mean, pair of Nike sneakers. They're expensive. They're definitely yeah. expensive for retail. That's for sure. Like, yeah. I mean, Dior Jordans are what two thousand dollars for retail, and the yeah. and the LVs in the U.S. are what twelve hundred. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, something like 100. that. And I feel like the Dior Jordans have, like, very good quality. Like, I mean, I have wow. a pair of the Lowe's. When I, like, t- like also on the topic of pickup of the month, I mean, I've had those for a couple months now. How do they still count? The, those were definitely my yeah, those are still pickup, of, pickup. Like, pickup of the year. I mean, that's yeah. the sneaker I've been enjoying the most. I mean, I'm out in Brazil right now, but I still have my pair with me. I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed that sneaker, specifically in the low-top silhouette. And I thought about buying the high top silhouette at one point as well recently, but I mean, I've just really, really been enjoying the, the low tops. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. interesting. Y'all mentioned the quality on it too. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, when it comes to, to sneakers, the quality on certain things is hit and miss, and we can touch on the Dior's too because I'm interested in that. But the silhouette of the LV low, I mean, it's just a it's just a nice silhouette. It doesn't look oh, sure. it doesn't look like 
a tacky sneaker. It looks like yeah, a really nice. Yeah, it doesn't nice look like sneaker. a tacky designer sneaker, you know, like right. Louis Vuitton before Virgil came on. Oh, you know, definitely. They yeah. had like a lot of these like monogrammed out like super Louis Vuitton sneakers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like Virgil's kind of giving it like a streetwear vibe, which obviously I mean sure. it's very very in line with what he does, right? Yeah. But yeah, I feel like you can definitely see the influences from uh, from sneakers like. I mean, I think he based them on vintage basketball sneakers from the 80s, I believe. Mm-hmm. They kind of look like the threes. If you look at the bottom, like yeah. the sole, it's like the same sole as the Jordan yeah. threes. Well, yeah, I mean, the first time I ever saw them was like the black cement colorway. And I yeah. think I saw Rocky wear the high ones. And I was thinking like, these are like a, mi- a, mi- like a mix of like the twos, the threes, and like yeah. even even like the ones. Even the extent. ones, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I definitely it's agree. A, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful piece. T, you're one of the lucky ones to have got the Dior lows, man. Um, obviously, sneaker aside, it is probably like was probably the biggest talk sneaker pa- of the past year. For sure. Uh, however, a lot of people, I mean, obviously, not a lot of people have touched them in the world. So I, yeah. I don't know. Corey doesn't know. You know, though, in yeah. terms of like the quality and how they actually feel, I mean, is is it worth what you get? I mean, at the end of the day, like, no, right? I mean, you buy a pair of pants. <laughs> yeah. You buy a pair of Vans for $90 and like you're getting a great shoe. You can even get a suede pair of Vans. You're getting like a solid sole. You know, you're getting like a well-built shoe for $90. At the end of the day, if you can get a well-built shoe for $90 or $80, there should be no shoe in the world that should cost $2,000, right? Which is retail, let alone, you know, whatever, $6,000 or whatever resale is. Yeah, exactly right. So at the end of the day, I mean, you're paying these prices because like you're not looking for the quality there right i mean you want the name you want the way it looks i mean you at the end of the day yeah you got dior jordans right like you said xr yeah not a lot of people have had the chance to touch them and i definitely agree that they've gotten a lot of slack because of that like people are like yeah fuck the dior jordans right. like like, like the like design's lazy yeah exactly but you know what? i told you when i got the shoe in my hand like i wanted to double up you know i wanted to buy a second yeah. pair because really like the low tops I'm, I haven't worn any shoe as much as that shoe mm-hmm. besides the uh, the Common Project Achilles Low. Like, that's like my signature shoe. I mean, I have. Yeah. I should pull up a picture after on the selective. Yeah, I mean, I have, yeah. Like, eight pairs of uh, of Common Project Achilles Low in all white. Show you all of them. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and um, yeah, it's it's good to hear about that because not a lot of people have that like that anecdotal experience, if you will, with with holding those shoes. Corey, yeah. like uh, like uh, T mentioned, you're wearing that sweater right now. Um, another one, uh, an, another piece by Virgil. We're seeing a, a, a definitely, yeah. like he mentioned, a more streetwear vibe. Uh, how's that sweater treating you? It's really nice. It's like, I mean, it's full wool, and um, I won't lie, like, I normally fucking hate full wool sweaters because they're itchy as fuck, and yeah. this one's it's super soft. I honestly feel like it's actually comparable to, like, some cashmere sweaters I've owned in terms of uh, wow. how it feels on body. Which is yeah, so cool. I had that I had that sweater for a little bit, and I definitely mm-hmm. agree with everything Corey said. I mean, I only sold mine because it was a little tight on me. Yeah. But um, I bought it in the store physically. I mean, I walked in and I kind of saw it and I was like, this is kind of cool. Like, right. And then, I mean, yeah, I really, I really felt the vibe for it. And for example, I really wanted to buy this sweater, this knit sweater that he did recently, which is like all blue with clouds on it. Mm. Oh, yeah. That I've seen sweater, that one. yeah, I went to go buy it, right? And in the store, it was like, four thousand dollars it was something crazy oh like gosh. that for a sweater for a knit sweater and they were like yeah it's knitted and whatnot hand knit and whatnot and i was like dog four thousand dollars four thousand dollars and like i don't right. care i don't care who knitted this sweater right yeah right. this sweater that you're wearing right now Corey, the studio sweater i mean maybe we can put up a graphic on the actually there is a sure. screen we could probably yeah. just even like I'll, 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 I'll link it in the description yeah I mean, yeah once, sean has a post on it on our on our page yeah, exactly. I mean, if you guys don't know what sweater it is, we'll, we'll find a way to show you guys. Anyway, I bought that sweater for what, like $1,000? I mean, a fourth of the price. And I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not paying four times the price for that other knitted sweater. Totally, right? totally. Even yeah. though I like the design more, I thought it was, I mean, I thought the price was outrageous. For sure, yeah. And speaking of LB, on the selective, y'all posted uh, some of y'all's favorite shots from the recent Run Race show. That um, mm-hmm. that varsity jacket, that like four screen varsity is insane. Yeah. Um, so everybody's yeah. talking about that varsity. I mean, just on that post, a lot of people were sending me a message like, yo, this varsity is crazy, like this varsity yeah. is crazy. But something that I thought about a lot that a lot of people I feel like haven't really thought about is that if you look at that varsity, varsity and you take away the Louis Vuitton branding. And it's just put, a vintage varsity jacket. No, it, it actually just looks just like an off-white oh, varsity really? jacket. Like, yeah, look, really? into, uh, look into off-white varsity jackets mm. that he did like early in his time. 
and off white. Yeah. Like they're like very loud, like very colorful. Yeah, I remember they had like the huge there. W and like the chess embroideries and shit like that. I feel like that that exact green one. I mean, you could replace that Louis Vuitton branding with off white branding, and people wouldn't look at it the same way. That's the only thing. That oh, I definitely. Like. like I think that jacket's sick. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like people haven't really taken in that perspective because they're so absorbed by the whole. You know, it's Louis mm-hmm. Vuitton. That's I a, totally agree. Yeah. Go ahead, Corey. Uh, I was gonna say, like, I think even when it comes to these uh these trainers, right? I have two pairs, and I won't lie, I was like a pretty big Virgil hater on Off White. Um, some of the runway like, shows everybody, I was like yeah. I liked, but then I saw the trainers, I was like, fuck, these are like, Hard. like I have the uh I have the orange and gray pair. I won't lie, I actually bought those because I saw uh, I saw so I saw T wearing the black cement ones. I saw damn, those are sick, and I saw I think it was like Ken wearing those ones. I was like, fuck, yeah. I need those. <laughs> so later that summer, I went to Korea. They had one more in my size in store in the in the airport actually, and I ended up popping them. Wow. Yeah, I bought my yeah. black cement pair in Tokyo. I was actually with Ken, and then right when I got to when I was leaving Tokyo, this white and orange pair was coming out, and then mm-hmm. back when I got back home, I bought that pair when I got back home, and I know Ken. We were talking about it, and he picked up his pair like right when I right when they landed in Tokyo. Man, that might have to be one of uh, my next sneaker pickup for sure. Um, it's but it's it's interesting though how like the opinions change. Like you mentioned, Corey between uh, White Virgil and now at, at Louis Vuitton. And to be completely yeah. to be completely fair, like some of the stuff we saw at the runway show, yeah, uh, like it, it it's obviously it's it's not just like streetwear inspired. There's some really nice sure. menswear pieces in there too. And I think I think uh, for all of the slack that people have given Virgil in the past, I think this this past runway show was really good. Um, oh, definitely. And it's definitely. interesting though you mentioned that to you about the varsity eight that. I, I hadn't looked into how similar it is to the to the right. white ones, but maybe it just goes yeah. to show that you could just buy a vintage varsity and still get the look. I mean, yeah, I'm on the. I just want to Google images right now. I think I found the varsity that she's talking about. It's like the exact same. It just has like some red uh, ribbing on the bottom, and um, the the patches are orange instead of uh, instead of yeah, green I mean, or I'm whatever. You, he yeah. used to do a lot of these like loud varsity sure, yeah. designs at off white. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, All right, I guys. Like, go ahead. I'm not knocking the. Uh, I'm not knocking the varsity. I think it's. It's like, nice. Yeah. But yeah. Go on, man. I yeah, I, I don't want to knock it either. I, I. I think it's a beautiful piece. The construction looks great. It'll be interesting to see it out in the mm-hmm. wild, just like that. That the one that we saw from a few seasons ago, that blue and white one that everyone loves. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. The Oz one. Yeah, yeah. That one is so overpriced now. I saw some. Yeah, Corey, like you 10K. have that, right? I do. Yeah. You have it. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Oh I actually. <laughs> I won't lie. That was also a pretty. I I bought that because of Tia. I won't lie. I saw <laughs> I saw his first fit pick. It was like I think it was like in London or something, like a cafe. And I was like, Yeah, because I bought this that is in sick. London. So basically, like I was traveling to London to go link up with my boy Oliver. Shout out to Oliver Guan if you guys know who that is. Um, I was meeting up with him and my friend Sam, which was Zucker Swag, who hopefully we'll be able to get on the yeah. podcast at one point. Yeah, a uh, good friend of mine, good friends of mine. And so I linked up with them in Selfridges in London, which is like a big. Uh, big mall or like luxury brand store like multi-brand store and yeah. just then they were having virgil's first ever uh, louis vuitton pop-up in selfridges and they had like the very last varsity was that varsity jacket and it wasn't even really my size which is why i ended up selling it i i would have needed a 46 and that was a 48 uh-huh. but um but i bought it right then and there and i wore it in london and then i wore it in other places yeah i mean i wore that jacket. i got a lot of wear out of that jacket it's a jacket i really enjoyed how uh and, how are the construction on them i mean it, oh really it's nice. insane yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's great really like i think the nice. uh i believe the, the leather part, on the sleeves yeah the leather is insane. the leather on the sleeves for me is what's really crazy it's like is it's it? really like buttery tumbled mm-hmm. leather yeah, and it's kind of it's not white it's kind of like creamy color that's that, that, that's the best jacket that he's yeah. done so far to me that's what like really surprising about virgil's lv because so I I like I won't lie I was a former hype beast I mean I, I still definitely have those hype beast tendencies I mean good. I'm yeah, wearing yeah, Virgil LV we right do. now yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all good but I used to have some off white tees and off white hoodies and like it's nowhere near worth the price but and, and especially like I also owned a lot of like Gucci stuff as well and a lot of Gucci like the hoodies and shit yeah. it was just yeah. like you know, you're paying like eighteen hundred dollars for an embroidered hoodie right yeah right um but when I felt the Virgil LV stuff in the store I was like I was really really impressed with the quality because especially because I was someone who these th- things like Fear of God saint laurent right brands that are more about the design than the um actual quality materials mm. no i mean definitely i mean i think he's doing a great job for sure yeah, yeah. definitely I, I gotta get my hands on, on one of those varsities and like you said like the off-white cream on the sleeve it just looks like different oh definitely it, it looks very well constructed um it's awesome yeah, yeah. 
All right, guys. Well, speaking of of, of pieces that <laughs> we've had enjoyed in the past, obviously this past year has been has been crazy. Um, since it's almost been one year, uh, it's already February twenty first uh, as we're recording right. this podcast, and it's almost been one whole year since the pandemic hit and it's kind of shifted the way we look oh, at yeah. the world. Um, I remember. I think we all back in March we didn't know how long this was gonna last, and uh, it's lasted a very very long time. Uh, that I remember people were saying, "Let's just quarantine for two weeks." Right. It'll only be two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, and it, that it, was uh, that was in March. I'm, I'm saying on Twitter that like March was just last month. I mean, it's just been a weird year. Um, yeah, but, it's crazy. But that being said, we've also like like the way we look at clothes maybe or may not have changed a little bit. For me, it has changed. Um, I, I haven't necessarily been buying uh, uh, as much, and the things that I do buy, I just tend to go vintage. Um, I've also for sure. been working from home for 11 months, so I've been I've had a lot of time to just look in my closet, and I think a lot of people have, and to just kind of reflect on what you have and what you really need. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to go around and talk about that. Um, one, how has this past how has this past 11 months been for y'all, and, and did y'all think that we'd be in this situation for as long as we've been in it? Definitely, to answer your second question, no. I remember I left New York City in March thinking I would be back, like, yeah, like Corey said, maybe two weeks, three weeks, a month later. Yeah. And I just never came back, right? I had to have someone go to my apartment and move my stuff out, put it in the storage. And, like, my life definitely has shifted a lot. And not to mention the fact that a lot of, like, my day-to-day wardrobe stayed in New York City. Oh, that's all right. My stuff's, all my stuff's in storage. So, and I really had to adapt to the stuff I wear, which I think has added even more to my tendency to kind of wear like a uniform where every day mm. it's quite easy for me to get dressed you know i'll wear like a, a great pair of trousers you know shout out text yeah, yeah. um <laughs> you know or in a t-shirt and like a pair of jordans or a pair of fountain projects or something yeah. like just call that a day right right Corey, how's it been for you honestly uh it's pretty much been the same i haven't really like honestly the only time i i really dress up like nowadays, if I want to like dress up, I have to go. It's like if I'm going grocery shopping. Like there's nowhere <laughs> else to really go. Right. Um, I've tended to stay a little bit like more, I guess, conservative during the whole pandemic. I've seen a lot of my friends go out and shit like that. I had the expectation that like when they said, "Oh, we'll, we'll only quarantine for a few months. It's gonna be fine." I like kind of had that feeling that like I knew people were not gonna like wear masks properly. We're not gonna like right. quarantine at all. Um. So I kind of had that suspicion that it would it would last longer, but I didn't expect it to be this long, to be honest. I, I was thinking like maybe like a few months, but not a, but like a year, basically. Yeah, and uh, for your wardrobe too. I mean, have you have you been purchasing as much this past year? Or have you noticed your spending habits kind of change? Um, I would say that I'm definitely purchasing less because I just have less money to buy stuff. Yeah. Like before, I used to. So I don't really buy clothing with money that I earn from working, as well as money that i've uh gone for my parents that is supposed to be used for uh food but <laughs> the college know, I got, life i've been there yeah i mean i i love eddie slim also you know i have to stay slim for that so yeah. why spend money on food when we buy clothes anyways <laughs> um yeah it's definitely i've definitely been thinking a lot about more reflection wise and also another thing that's been packed me a lot as well is um so my sister re- she, she's also like decently into fashion she's not like a nerd like me but she's yeah. like you know into like mainstream stuff and stuff like that right here's all the trends and she moved recently to because she just graduated from med school or yeah she just finished or no she just finished her residency so she moved mm. to Toronto and um, when she moved she had like so much shit that was like it was insane like yeah and that kind of made me consider like what I have and like what I I guess you know really need right yeah um, yeah I think we've all been there and T like you were saying with the uniform pieces I, I've kind of been through that too right like I've, I'm looking like all, like at all the all the stuff I've had the stuff I've collected and. You know, to 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 the people listening, I've kind of split time too. You know, I'm from Texas, so um, and I've been working from home, so I have spent some time in Texas, hunkered down with with my family because I've, you know, it just made sense to be over there instead of New For York. Sure. And obviously, a lot of my stuff was back in New York, so when I was in Texas, it was just the same stuff. You know, uh, jeans, boots, maybe a shirt, a pair of sneakers, and and that's really it. Um, but now that I'm back in New York and and I have my full wardrobe, it, it's kind of been. I'm looking at the stuff I have, and I'm thinking, okay, I could definitely get rid of this. Like, I haven't really worn this. You know, maybe this, this sure. can go to a better home. And uh, uh, it, it's, it's not even like um, – it's not even like, like I feel bad about having clothes because for me, clothes are like an art, and you know, an artist has a collection of stuff, and I'm okay with having a lot of clothes because I like to reflect on the pieces I have. But, you know, it gets to a point where it's kind of been like, okay, you know, maybe – you know, maybe I shouldn't Too have – 
yeah, maybe I shouldn't have this much stuff. Um, T, when you all dropped those trousers, I, uh, it, it couldn't have been a more perfect timing, too, because it was in the middle of the pandemic and a lot of people, I mean, you all, I guess, I don't know if you want to call it a slogan, which would be like, what, like the only pair of trousers you need, right? Mm. And it's kind of yeah. like worked out with uh, kind of the theme of, of the pandemic is like, you know, maybe the stuff that you need and, and, and that's it, so. For sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have three pairs of the Tux trousers, right, that I just rotate. Yeah. A lot of people probably think I wear the same same pants <laughs> every day, but, but uh, yeah, and I, that's something that I really enjoy. And then on the topic that you guys were talking about, you know, how much I've been buying and whatnot, and the fact that, you know, when you're in New York City, you buy something on Amazon or you buy something on Grail, then like two days oh, later like, or yeah. the next day, like, you know, it's at, it's at your door. The fact that now, you know, I don't even know where I'm going to be next month or, you know, yeah. two weeks mm-hmm. from now and I'm constantly moving around and then the travel restrictions change and, you know, everything's changing so constantly now that for me, like my online shopping has been so limited. You know? I mean, I feel like I've definitely had stages in my life where I've been obsessed with being on Grail and, you know, buying an item every day or every week or, you know, just yeah. always wanting to buy something new because it could come so fast and, and whatnot. Now I've definitely... I mean, like I said, the only thing I've bought maybe in the past two months was this bare knuckles suede jacket, which I bought yesterday. I mean, yeah, I feel like I just, like Corey said, I mean, you don't really have anywhere to go, right? Like, who am I oh, getting fresh? Yeah. Who am I getting fresh for? Like, who am I buying new new drip for? Right? Like, yeah. I mean, at the end of the yeah. day, it's like, of course, like there's always a, a, a part to clothing where it's like, as much as people want to bullshit and say, oh, I only dress for myself. Like, let's be honest, like. Unless you're one of those guys who wears like full Rick Owens and looks like a wizard, you're probably still dressing for uh for maybe dressing for a little bit a little bit for someone else. Like at least right. there yeah. has to be at least like one percent of you dressing for someone else. I think. No, I mean I, w- I I think that you can very much wear what you like and still dress for someone else. You know, like I would say that my style sure. very much like for I sure. wear stuff that I like that I'm comfortable in. But then again, I mean I I look at the way I dress as a way to accent you know who I am, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. so you know I'm getting fresh at the end of the day because. Because, yeah, I mean, I like to accent that part of who I am. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that, T. I've, it, it, I've had, you know, like, my girlfriend, like, tease me a little bit. Like, my, my sister's on a back in text. Right. Like, Why the hell are you dressing up? And it's like, dude, just let me feel good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and you know, so, and, and like Corey, you said earlier, like, going to the grocery store was, like, like nowadays is, like, dressing up. I feel the same way, man. Like, going outside or, like, going to the post office because I sold something or, like, going to the grocery yeah. store or picking up food. It's, like, my only time. And, um I, I personally think that's why athleisure is going to be really big. Oh, uh, for sure. Uh, this coming year, uh, we've already seen uh, some designers really go towards that direction with the sweatpants, mm-hmm. uh, the, the sweaters, more uniform uh, pieces. That's something that I think is really going to keep going in 2021 because a lot of people like, are just at home. It, it's super huge in, like, China and L.A., especially from what I've noticed. Like, mm. if you look at L.A., like, so many uh, girls are wearing, like, tie-dye, full sweatsuits and shit like that. In China, yeah. it's Fog Essentials. You know, they have like, yeah. the fog essential sweatpants, the tees, the hoodies, everything, you know. Um, and yeah, I really, do, but just going on the topic of like a uniform, I really do like the idea of having that kind of like that daily uniform that you can wear like every day, right? Um, just like a go to outfit, right? Um, yeah. And I mean, for me, a few years ago, it was like Ise Miyake, Om Plisse, or Om Plisse, my fucking French is awful. Yeah. So I, the fact that I learned it for like nine years. <laughs> um, the pleats, man, the pleats. Yeah, the pleats. I have like I have the black pair and I have a brown pair as well. Uh, and yeah, I used to wear that every day with like a vintage, like a, like a bit of an oversized vintage tee. Yeah. And that was like more of a summer thing, uh, and like with the Vans or Air Force Ones. And um, yeah, I mean, like for me, especially in high school, the other thing that I did was like Saint Laurent Wyatts with like skinny jeans and a hoodie, basically, pretty yeah. much my every day. It's funny you mentioned the pleats. Uh, I was in New York City in like November or October and I went to the Isimiyaki store and it was by appointment only. It was like super empty. I don't know what, mm-hmm. I, I forgot which store it's on. It, it's in, I think it's in Soho. I don't know which one. But I think there's two. Um, but I actually went to the women's store uh, mm-hmm. and I got a, I, I bought a pair of pleats and man, I, I mean, it was my first pair of pleats but I haven't worn them because like I, I have nowhere to go so they've just been in my mm-hmm. closet. Yeah, they've just been in my closet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, even on that topic of like how the whole pandemic has shifted our entire lifestyle, I mean, I feel like at least reflected in my Instagram, like, I don't even post. I don't post any fit pics, right? Yeah. Like I don't really. Yeah. Get fit, I don't really get like fit pics and like. Right. Because I mean I don't know. I feel like that's not really a part of my life anymore. I mean I don't really feel like I have anywhere mm-hmm. to go or yeah. like, you know, I'm kind of at home or I'm at the beach or I'm doing whatever. Like I'm not really worried about 
you know, back when I'm in New York and I'm living everyday life and I have my routine sure. and, you know, and I have, you know, I have my sneakers, I have my outfits and I just, I do my thing. Right. Right. But I feel like the pandemic definitely, and that's reflected a lot, which is why I also a lot of respect to the people that are still getting that Instagram game off. Oh, like, totally. You know, yeah. In the pandemic. Like, yeah. I mean, actually, you even posted consistently, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the thing is, is that like, okay, so how I got involved with the podcast, I reached out to T and, you know, we kind of, we kind of talked uh, from there. But really, like, 2020 was the year, like, because I was at home so much, I'd always talk to my girlfriend about, like, you know, I really like clothes. Like, obviously, I have a full-time sure. job, and, and I, I enjoy what I do. But I just wanted to do something with my hobby. For and sure. she's like, just start posting fit pics. I got a, a $10 tripod off Amazon. It shipped to my place, like, in one day. And, mm -hmm. like, like that's what I use, dude. And, like, this this year, like, 2020 was, was the year where, I like, I started my blog. I'm doing this now. It was kind of, like you know, for me, uh, a time where I could like express myself because I was, I was home. I got to look at myself in the mirror a lot more and I thought, okay, like what do I really enjoy doing? And like, what do I really want to get out of my life. And I know it sounds corny saying that a fit pick is, is that <laughs> because there's obviously so much more to it than a fit pick, right? right. It, it's yeah, just it's like getting to know people. It's self-expression too, right? I yeah. Mean, at the end of the day, right. I met Corey and I met UXR because, mm -hmm. you know, we met, I guess through Instagram or whatever. Yeah. And, and fit pics and you know yeah. the whole community and everything that's a part of that right i mean it's, it's way more than just than just that yeah 100 percent um i do want to okay. ask you before we transition to the next topic though guys whenever we're back up and running what's the one place you need to go or what's the one place you want to travel to next for me i've never been to japan japan tokyo looks like a freaking dream i need oh, to it's I, awesome i need yeah. to get out there next so I don't same know. here yeah I, I don't know what you're thinking but that's for me i haven't been to tokyo since i was like I want to say like I was six years old, so oh, it's wow. been like, was that like, thir 12, 13 years now? So yeah, that's definitely a place I really want to go to again. Um, the last time I was in Asia, it kind of sucked because I wasn't able to go. I was only able to go to uh, Seoul, which is still awesome. I, I love Korea, but it was like I wish I could do like kind of like trifecta right of China, Korea, and Japan, but only I was able to do two. For sure. Yeah, I mean, for me, I feel like I've been lucky enough that my pandemic. Has been hasn't been extremely limited. I mean, I've been able to not travel like I used to because I'm definitely yeah. someone that travels a lot. But right. but I mean, I've been in Brazil now. I'm in Brazil right now currently. For those of you guys listening, um, I've been in Brazil now for like a little over a month. I mean, I just got back from the beach like two days ago. I was there for a week. I mean, you know, I've been able to enjoy some things. You know, of course, while still respecting the COVID guidelines. I mean, every time I travel, I'm getting COVID tests and whatnot. Right. But um. A place I want to go. I want to go back to New York, man. I mean, I haven't been oh, in New same. York since since yeah. March. Like, for me, that's same. where I live, and I haven't even been able to go to my the city where I live. You know, to my home right. in for almost sure. a year. And I mean, it also makes me sad, dude. You know, at least now, I mean, I've heard the indoor dining's reopened, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah they, know, they started that again. Yeah, but before, I mean, it was making it made me very sad to see the city so empty. You know. Yeah kind of down yeah. just felt like everything was a little down out there but i'm excited yeah. for hopefully life to get back to normal soon and for me to be able to get back to new york the world's getting better we're opening up again for sure for so, sure so hopefully we can you know once things get back to normal we can we can go to the places we love and do the things that we love for sure also yeah. i mean see each other right i mean oh yeah. totally yeah i mean i have my uh i have family in new york and also of course like t said i want to see you guys too yeah exactly i mean greg who hopefully you guys will meet sooner or later and a lot of the other members of our team at the selective i mean we're all kind of scattered but yeah you know two, a couple of us are in new york a couple of us are in canada so yeah. i mean hopefully we'll be able to get the team mm -hmm. together this year and, uh, for sure yeah. it'll be exciting for now it's virtual which is fine we're making it work but guys yeah. work. uh we're doing we're doing pretty good on time here i wanted to move on to one of the last things i wanted to talk about um for sure. anything any future pickups before we end that you're looking for or looking towards doing this month for me personally, um, I'm just going to keep buying vintage. There's something that I'm really eyeing on. It's a pair of Andy boots. I haven't been able to, to get a pair. I think Andy Milmeister is one of the greatest mm. designers of our time. and totally, um, totally. I see a lot of people wearing her boots, and those silhouettes are really popular. I'm getting That's into right. a lot of boots, and, and uh, hopefully time, you know, with time I, I, can, I can get a pair of those boots. But, yeah, for me, it's just going to be continuing vintage. Maybe get a nice pair of boots, and uh, I'll be happy with that. I guess that actually kind of reminds me. I did have another pickup that I totally forgot about. Um, the, like I forgot to mention, I got the uh, Dior Navigates kind of recently. Oh, um, cool. Yeah, I've had a couple yeah. pairs of those. And those are they're a really great combat boot. I do think that they're really overrated in the sense that 
there are a billion com- slim and tall combat boots that you can get, like from Andrew Green, Green, Easter, Bell, there's yeah. Celine, there's Saint Laurent. But the zero ones at this point are they're so overpriced for what they are, especially because of the hype as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, in terms of what I'm continuing to look to pick up is like honestly, my favorite designer is Hyder, so probably more Hyder, but I'm looking more towards like the runway pieces and the tailoring, mm. as well as um, I really still love a lot of Saint Laurent denim, like the super distressed stuff from like 2013, like the chain stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I also recently got a pair of Wyatt's from 2013. They're made of python leather, uh, and I really love those. But yeah, I've I've wanted a pair of Navigates. Um, T, you had a few. You you said you've had a few pairs. I have, I have boots that are really similar to the Navigates. I think mm. you're paying though for the history though, right? Oh, totally. I mean, you're paying yeah. for the name. I mean, when I was getting my pairs, I was getting pairs for like eight hundred dollars. Oh, you can't get them these days. Yeah, 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 not at all. But um, I don't know. I mean, I for sure. I mean, I remember I sold Ken one of my pairs actually, and then yeah. I think he sold that pair to Oscar, Oscar Jardor. Mm-hmm. If you guys know who that is. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, that's actually funny. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I, for me, I mean, my something I've been looking to pick up. I don't know. I mean, I haven't. To be honest, I haven't had my eye on you know new releases and whatnot. But oh, actually, a, a pickup that I made that I really enjoyed. A little off topic, but I bought um this Raf Simmons, uh, two thousand one, two thousand two autumn winter like the ride, ride, ride everything mm-hmm. sweatshirt. It's called. It's like all. Black. Oh yeah. It's on, it's on the selective right now. But um, yeah, I love that one. But that's a piece that I really enjoy. I mean, I've really been enjoying it. I don't even know if I'll really sell it. It's up for a pretty high price on the selective, but that's kind of like, because I'm reluctant to uh, to let go mm-hmm, of it. Sure. But I've really been enjoying that piece. I mean, it's something that I'm not really into archive and specifically Raph Simmons so much these days, but I mean, maybe like four years ago, I used to be really, really into it back when I had like yeah. the Ultra Guys Parka and whatnot. Yeah. And so that's a piece that, you know, I always wanted during that time and I never had, so. For sure. So I'm um, hyped to kind of have it now. But something I'm kind of looking to buy right now is Prada. And I think it was 2017. They had like a fall winter runway that had like all these knits that had like these really cool designs on them. Like oh, mo- yeah. yeah. Like these mohair kind of uh, crew neck sweatshirts. And like there's one of them that has like a, vi- a fishing village on it. And like another one that has yeah. like a yeah. plate with two bottles of wine. Like I don't know. They have like this cool... Kind of, they look like paintings, designs on these mohairs, yeah. Prada sweatshirts. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at picking up one of those, to be honest. I mean, yeah, yeah. I've been looking I mean, speaking... for a while, but I kind of want to pull the trigger. For sure. I mean, speaking on Prada, another thing that I've, I've really enjoyed a lot are the um, Christophe Chimay shirts, right? Mm-hmm. I currently right, have yeah. two. The, I bought them like I bought them for good prices back like, in like 2017, 2016, and. The thing is that back then I used to like weigh a bit more, so they actually don't fit me as well as they used to mm-hmm. because I think I have like a 46 in them, whereas I think nowadays I need a 42 or 44 in them even. Yeah, um, yeah I've had a couple of those. Yeah. Those are really nice. I really do like those, and um, I definitely want – I'd like to like almost like complete a set. The set, uh, yeah. Yeah, I really respect those archivists on Instagram I've seen. Like there's some – these guys in China I've seen, they have like – it's like they have like every single piece from like Raph ra- – like, from yeah. Raph from like 2001 or like from 1995 to like 2007. They'll have like every single piece from Gucci, Tom Ford, yeah. uh, every piece from Hedy Dior. Like I really, I, I think that's really respectful in the sense that it's it's not easy, right? And I mean, if right. you've, uh, Shameless Plug, if you read our article with James, uh, hmm. he does go over that is that um, there's guys with unlimited budgets out there who just can't finish these collections because, because they don't have the patience. It's not even about the money, right? Yeah, it's, it's literally the time that you take spend, like the time spent just searching for hours for um, for these pieces even yeah uh, t you were mentioning uh, that quickly on on raf and like how you used to collect a lot of stuff even like the even like the raf by raf stuff which was like yeah considered super like rare. It, it, it wasn't even considered it was like like it was the like non- the poor man's raf simmons right, right. Yeah. and like nowadays like those pieces mm. move really fast and some of those pieces yeah, yeah. Like bomber. Are, mm-hmm. the bomber that we sold on the initial 50 item drop that used to be mine the that patch bomber wrap yeah up. i mean that was always been one of my favorite pieces ever right and i mean i i originally picked that bomber up for like i think it was like 800 dollars or 750 dollars just went into me i mean that's kind of crazy that you can get like a, a wrap sure. bomber yeah. that's actually like really nice craftsmanship and a really nice bomber for 750 dollars when people buy you know riot bombers for fifteen thousand. yeah i mean especially nowadays right like back i'd say like a few years ago like i mean even 2015 is like where we saw a bit of like hype with archive like i think kind of the beginning of the archive hype and raf right but back then i remember like i bought a uh, penelope tree shark hoodie for like 
three hundred seventy dollars, I think. Nowadays they're going for like I seen one go for like two K on Grail, which is it's yeah. crazy to me because uh yeah, it makes I've me wish like, I held on to my shit more. <laughs> I've had like every colorway of that Penelope shark hoodie and like I I sold my black with the red print on it to yeah. two Grail themselves. And I sold that I think for twenty six hundred, so yeah, it, it, yeah, it's interesting how these how these older pieces and how much value they're accumulating now. And and like you said, like for these guys into archive, it's not even about like the money. It's about like just finding the pieces because some of them are getting really hard the more and more people are mm. into archive. But guys, making good time here. Um, I think that's gonna conclude it for our first episode. I appreciate you all coming on the pod. Um, obviously, this first episode we just wanted to to get a good introduction with some of the members of the team. In the future, we're definitely gonna have more and other members of the selective to come on and we're going to keep moving on this for now you're going to hear my voice every week so you'll have to deal with that but we're going to have a good time <laughs> we're going to have uh, some really cool exclusive interviews uh, we're going to be working with the editorial team at the selective to bring out good content but for now you know thank you all for tuning in Corey, thanks for coming on the show hey, uh, my pleasure yeah t thanks for coming on man i appreciate it yeah it's my pleasure man i mean i'm looking forward to coming on for more episodes and uh, of course yeah. to you know keep the ball rolling with this podcast for sure for sure guys all right you have a good one the selective is a fashion e-commerce and consignment platform with items for sale ranging from sneakers to archive and luxury goods you can also reach out to the selective with clothes you would like to sell and we'll take the burden off of your hands for more information, you can visit our website, which will be linked in the description of the podcast. We also have original editorial content on the Selective, bringing you insight on the history and cultural impacts of creatives across the industry. Follow us on Instagram at the Selective. Thank you all so much for tuning into the first episode, and I'll see you next week.